All right, well, God bless you. Blessing to be here this morning. Uh, we're a little behind here, so if we just go ahead and get right into gear here. If you open up your Bibles to Matthew 5, we're going to be looking at Matthew 5. And we're going to be looking at verses 27 through 30. Matthew 5, 27 through 30. This is on our series, Direct uh, the teachings of Christ. We've actually titled it Straight from God. We know that when Jesus was walking here on earth, he was God in man form. Second part of the Trinity. We've got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So all these teachings that the series that we're on, we're going to be going through his teachings, and it's going to take us all the way, like I've said, in case you've, you have been here last few weeks, it's going to take us right into uh, the middle of June. And again, every teaching that we're looking at over here, this is actually straight from God himself. So I don't know about you, but if God says something, I want to make sure that not only do I read it, but that I thoroughly understand it because this is his word. It is the only and exclusive truth because everything that we read out there has a bias based on the author, uh, has an author's bias to everything that we read out there. This is actually straight from God. It's just our series straight from God. Right now we're looking at Sermon on the Mount. We're going to be looking at parables uh, when, we're, when we conclude with our Sermon on the Mount. These are actually stories that Jesus told that have a point. We won't be going into every one of them. And then after that, we're going to be looking at some of the prophetic teachings that Jesus actually spoke about. And that won't be going until uh, um, perhaps as much as late as uh, late spring. But that's kind of where we're at right now. And we hope that we'll wrap it up here by uh, early, no more than, late, than midsummer. But Matthew 5, 27 to 30. Uh, last week, we spoke a little bit about anger. It wasn't really on anger management, but it's what Jesus had to say about anger. And anger is sinful because when we get angry and there's a sinful anger, we spoke about a righteous anger and an unrighteous anger. Righteous anger is the type of anger that God has, but it doesn't cause him to go out there and lose control and start hitting people, killing people. It doesn't do that. His righteous anger, he hates sin. And we spoke about that. Sin destroys his creation. So when he sees sin, he's going to hate it because it destroys his creation. And what was the consequence of that anger? Uh, we know that he's judged the world and he's going to judge sin in, 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 at a later time. But he brought Christ to come. And so when we get angry, a righteous anger, we're supposed to get angry at sin. So we hate the sin, yet love the sinner. An unrighteous type of anger, however, it's when we get so angry at somebody that in our heart, we actually want to kill them on the spot. So what Jesus said is that murder is not committed when we actually go out there and kill somebody. That once we get so angry at someone in our hearts, we are actually guilty of murder. And of course, a lot of people become angry with this because now it's actually challenging how they view themselves. And most people, we want to view ourselves as being good people. While back then you had the Pharisees, the teachers, the theologians, the scholars, the priests. And he's actually saying, hey, you think because you haven't killed anybody, you're not guilty of murder? Well, guess what? You've already committed murder because God looks at the heart. All right, I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. And Matthew 5, 27 through 30. This is Jesus that's saying this. And straight from God, Jesus says... You've heard a commandment that says you must not commit adultery. We know in Exodus 20, we have the Ten Commandments. But I say anyone who even looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So if your left eye, even your good eye, causes you to lust, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your hand, even your stronger hand, causes you to sin... Cut it off and throw it away, for it is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. So Jesus here says, hey, you've heard the commandment that says you shouldn't commit adultery. Again, we had all these people that really thought they were just holier than thou. And they're the representatives from God. And this nobody, Jesus starts teaching, and he's like looking at him, and he's saying, you've been told... That if you don't commit adultery, you're not guilty of adultery. And of course, they're sitting very arrogantly and proudful with their arms crossed, perhaps, looking at them saying, of course, we have not committed murder. 
We have not committed adultery. We haven't committed anything. And he's saying it's not the act that constitutes adultery. It's what is in the heart that matters. So he's going to go ahead and he's going to get a lot of people angry at him. Because he knows exact, they know exactly what he's saying. He's saying, you know what? In your heart, I know that you've committed adultery and you're guilty of it. And that's definitely going to ruffle up some feathers. So let's talk a little bit about sin here. And I'll use whenever we're sick as an illustration. I don't know if you've ever been sick. Has anybody not ever been sick? Raise your hand. Have you, you never gone and gotten sick? One person? Gosh, I want to talk to you. You start your own product. Um, but I know now... Uh, before we leave here today, you can just go ahead and simply repent. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm sure we've all been sick. And some of us, if not most of us, whenever we get sick, it begins with perhaps a runny nose. We start getting a sore throat. Joints start to ache a little bit. We get a headache. And consequently, all of a sudden, we'll start feeling a little temperature to start creeping up on us. Well, this is not what got us sick. It's not the joints, the achy joints, the headache, the runny nose that got us sick. That's a symptom of something that infiltrated our body. That's a, that's a symptom of a virus already entering our body. And so our body's responding to it. So when we have these symptoms, that's because we, got, we are sick and our body's trying to do something about it. But that is not because we're sick. Well, uh, sin can somehow be the same. What Jesus is actually teaching us is that adultery in and of itself is not what constitutes adultery. Which brings me to my first point. What Jesus is actually trying to teach us here is that the act of adultery, or any immorality or sin for that matter, is an actual manifestation of the sin itself that was already in our hearts. The act of adultery is the actual manifestation of the sin itself that was already in our heart. So see, sin begins in the heart and it manifests itself outward, but it was already there. When you get sick, it's not that you got sick at that moment. It's just that the virus was able to grow enough where your body's trying to do something about it. Turn with me to uh, Mark 7 really quick here. Speaking about our first point over here. Mark 7. Let's look at verse 20 and through 23. It is what comes from the inside that defiles you. For from within, out of a person's heart, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, thir- sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, lustful desires, goes on, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. It says all of these vile things come from within and they are what defile you. So see, sin is actually in our hearts. Whether it be murder Whether it be adultery, it could be some other things such as pride, envy, jealousy. It's because that was already in our heart. And when we're living it out, it's because it was already in our heart. So the sin is not committed when we actually do the deed, but when we allow it to live in our heart. That's what Jesus is actually trying to teach us over here. And um, let's go ahead and go back to Matthew 5 here. We're going to go back to it in a moment. Now, every person, I don't know if anybody here has known somebody that's been addicted to some type of substance. It could be a, a, a drug, uh, could be prescription or non-prescription, uh, legal or, or not legal. It could be alcohol. But usually, everybody that gets addicted begins with just having one try, their very first try. But what actually happens is that when they go ahead and introduce this substance to their body, something happens in their brain cells where the cells will actually pick up on this substance and they will begin to emit dopamine. And uh, this hormone called dopamine makes your body feel good all over. And the body's in a good mood, everything is going great. So what happens is that the brain then says, this substance, whatever it is, that's good for my buddy. Because look at what my buddy has done. He's in a good mood. So therefore, it identifies that substance as something needed for its own survival. 
For example, when you get hungry, it's that your body's emitting signals using hormones, telling your body, you know what, I need nutrition. Same thing with thirst. You already needed it beforehand, but at that point, it's actually asking you to give me some food or give me some water or we're going to have some problems. Well, what happens is that then your brain becomes distorted and it views this substance, it even prioritizes that above food and water as something that it needs. And it's going to start asking for more and for more and for more where ultimately it begins to not only uh, get your exterior to deteriorate, but inside it's destroying your body and then your external tissues will begin to actually show uh, weird things. You're going to have... Uh, all these horrible things happen to you. Teeth will fall off, your bones, your, your skin, everything. But what actually happened was is that you introduced that substance or that alcohol, or it could even be an act. You can be addicted to many things, and your body will identify that as something that it needs for survival. So when you introduce that, it creates a hunger and a thirst for more of that illicit substance, whatever it may be. Well, sin is the same way. Brings me to my second point here, and that's what Jesus is going to be teaching us over here, is that sin in the heart creates a hunger and thirst for more sin or immorality or adultery in this case. So sin in the heart creates a hunger and a thirst for more immorality by doing the following. It leads us to believe that we are actually righteous as long as we don't commit the act. So all of a sudden...